my family and I took a little excursion um, during the week, Monday through Friday, and we went to, we took a little drive to Lake Tahoe um, for some R&R, shall we say, and some time with our, with our kids, obviously, and some time for the kids to run around and play, and we had a wonderful time. Uh, as any parent knows, vacation can be challenging, however, especially when you're going with children. And I must confess that this last week, um, I've felt at different times a little bit off kilter with my prayer life. And truth be told, I have felt this way a little bit off and on during the entire pandemic, given the craziness of schedules and um, the erratic nature of um, one's location and where we are and what we're doing and what to expect and how we can kind of block out time or not block out, block out time and everything else that's going on. And I'm sure that this is a sentiment that to some degree or another, perhaps a lot of us are feeling right now and have been feeling these last four months. It's difficult to kind of lock ourselves down and find that time uh, or at least that rhythm of prayer, shall we say. And so, at least speaking for myself, personally, I was very much looking forward to this Vespers service tonight. Vespers, Saturday night Vespers, cannot come fast enough, could, could not come fast enough today. It was something that I was very much looking forward to and very much enjoyed as we were praying tonight. Now, Vespers tonight was celebrated not because um, we have to celebrate Vespers during the season of Panagias, which we begin today, August 1st through 15th, when we celebrate Her Door Mission. Traditionally, the, the service that is celebrated during the evenings of this period, of course, is paraklesis, to the Mother of God. Thus, in other words, the supplication service or the supplication prayers, the supplicatory canon to the Mother of God. But Vespers is one of those things, one of those aspects of our Orthodox worships, or, excuse me, worship, an aspect of our ecclesiastical year and ecclesiastical calendar and ecclesiastical rhythm that schedule, that rhythm of services, that we all, as Orthodox, whatever part of the world we find ourselves in, participate in, whether in a parish or in a monastery, there is a set designation for morning prayers, evening prayers, of course, the Divine Liturgy. Um, if we were to be in a monastery, we would, we would celebrate the hours as well, the first hour, third hour, sixth hour, ninth hour, and other services that constitute this rhythm that we have. I talk about this rhythm a lot, and I won't talk about it again tonight, although suffice to say, the Orthodox Church does have a rhythm. But there's another term for this that I would like to focus on a little bit tonight. The Church has also been called, and we may have heard this term either in Sunday school or perhaps even in books that we've read as adults, heard the lives of saints use this phrase, but it is a very, very accurate phrase that has been used throughout the ages. And that is, the church is the ark of salvation. The ark as in like Noah's ark. We all hop on the ark, shall we say. And there is something to be said about the communal aspect of the church's prayer life. The church's rhythm that constitutes this ark. And of course, the sacraments and specifically Holy Communion and all the other ways in which that the church and we all together are saved, salvifically speaking, we are saved on this ark. To bring it down to the everyday life, the present day once again, the church fathers, guided by the Holy Spirit, know how difficult it is for us as human beings to kind of stay focused in that place, that moment of prayer, that time with God, if you will. Whether it be the morning or the evening or the middle of the night or anything in between. And so the church offers us, and it's not just even in the Christian tradition, even pre-Christ, we even hear about how Jesus himself and Mary and Joseph went to the temple at appointed times. And so even in the Old Testament, we have this kind of understanding that the evening and the morning prayers that we are supposed to have, the rhythm that the people of God have. The church has always understood this, that it is indeed difficult at times in our life um, for our personal prayer life to have that same kind of rhythm. But even so, 
healthy prayer life or not in our personal time, the church also has this prayer life. So we have the personal time and the communal time. The time when all of us together congregate, at least in theory, in the church, but certainly spiritually still at home because it is still the setting of the sun. And so no matter where we find ourselves, it is a, a time of prayer and the soul understands that. We gather and the ark itself picks us up and carries us. In other words, the church has always known in its wisdom that it is difficult sometimes to find a structure of prayer, a structure of that rhythm. And so the church provides that structure for us at all times, at every day, at every hour, every week, every month, and so forth. The church provides that structure where all of us can simply hop on the ark. And again, I don't mean to make too light of it, but when we celebrate these daily services, in this case, it's the resurrectional Vespers in anticipation on Saturday night of Sunday morning. When we gather together as a church and pray these prayers, which the fathers of the church, again, guided by the Holy Spirit, have passed down through the ages, which are timeless and always relevant because the human soul has a rhythm. The human soul understands that there is a rhythm to the day. The body certainly understands this. The soul also does. We don't often focus on it as much as we do of the rhythm of the body, the morning and the night. But the soul also has this rhythm, as I've said at different times throughout the year. And so we have these services, and we are blessed to have these kinds of services. These specific prescribed times for prayer in which we can all, regardless of what our state of being is, whether we are doing great in our personal prayer life or more often than not, probably not doing perhaps all that we could be doing or where we want to, what we want to be doing with our prayer life. Again, not to make too much of a blanket statement because every human being is different, but it is always beneficial for us to congregate together to receive the sacraments and to, at the appointed hours, worship God and pray with Him, with the hymns that have been passed down throughout the ages, throughout the centuries and even the millennia. One of the hymns we prayed tonight, by the way, Fosilaron, or O Gladsome Light, Saint Basil, who lived in the fourth century, referred to it as an ancient hymn, just to give you an idea. So who knows how old some of these hymns are, truly. Nevertheless, the communal time that the church gives us is a blessing. My prayer is that for all of us, during these this two weeks, certainly, but every day of our life and throughout the year, that it may seem and feel like a relief for all of us, as it did today for me, and allow ourselves to avail ourselves of that assistance, that prescription that we always need, which is the Ark of Salvation. During this time, let us again, and I will say this again tomorrow morning to remind ourselves, to remind all of us, but we have set services these next two weeks. Again, supplications to the Mother of God, but also Vespers. We will have Vespers before the Eve, excuse me, the Eve before the Feast of the Transfiguration. Um, the next Saturday, so a week from tonight, we will have again Resurrectional Vespers and Vespers before the Feast of the Dormition, as well as the Paraclesis services. So let us endeavor to the best of our abilities, if we are able, with our work schedule and our home schedule, to avail ourselves of this rhythm of prayer, this cycle of prayer, and these set times for our own spirituality and for the life of our community to be led by the Holy Spirit through these services and through our worship to the great feast of the Dormition of the Mother of God or to Pascha tu Kalokeriu, the, the Pascha of the summertime, as we often say in Greece. May we have her prayers as we prepare to celebrate her Dormition, that she may give us strength during this period of fasting and this period of prayer. God bless you. Have a wonderful evening. And we'll look forward to seeing everyone outside who will be here tomorrow, but also 
Uh, pray with everyone who is praying at home tomorrow during the Divine Liturgy. God bless you.